Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for coming. Hey, Master Chien Chie, um, Heng Lai here. Does he uh, continue to do the Chan Chi after, after 2018? Do you know? You don't keep up with these things? Uh, she asked them. Um, so now we are in the uh, new territory, totally unprepared, because uh, we are uh, continuing to uh, listen to Master Heng Lai's um, uh, Dharma talks during the Chan Chi he organized in 2018. Um, the Chan Chi uh, encapsulates the uh, mindset of Chan cultivation from the Chinese. Uh, unlike us Westerners, when we meditate, we, uh, we're seeking, it's a form of uh, uh, pleasure seeking for us. Am I correct? When you meditate, you know, I want to meditate because I feel good. Uh, but to the Chinese, they're quite different. Chinese, in the traditional Chinese, uh, they do Chan meditation because it's hard work. Uh, it's really a lot of hard work. Uh, it's, uh, and uh, it's their tradition. So when you do Chan, it's like uh, they have this, uh, in culturally, they understand that Chan is a form of meditation that is extremely beneficial. It's for the... Uh, privileged, if you will. So, uh, so for them, it's like uh, when you go to the temple and meditate, it's like uh, uh, you go to the temple and you go somewhere and you pay like uh, $1,000 for an hour of sitting meditation. I don't know about you, I know most of you are rich. For me, $1,000, if I would uh, make sure every second counts, okay? Uh, so that's a mindset the Chinese have. So this uh, for so I'm curious as to this monkey being a Westerner, and uh, uh, he's been with uh, my late Chinese teacher for a long, long time, and uh, uh, so I've never been trained by him uh, like that. So he trained me differently. He taught me differently, but he kept these people with him. So I'm always curious as to uh, how he taught them. And uh, so, uh, so uh, when we listen to him, we kind of catch and give us clues as how what he learned from his teacher uh, uh, verbally, as well his interpretation of what uh, Chinese Chan is. Okay, so uh, feel free to ask questions. Interrupt me any time. We can talk about anything you like. Okay, I'm learning just as much as you are. Shall we go? Any questions? Okay. He looks good, doesn't he? He looks so adorned. Yeah. Uh, I saw um, a photo of a Japanese um, Zen monk from uh, AAG. That's one of the biggest uh, Zen temples in Japan, and he looks similar to him. So, you know, maybe if you real uh, Chan cultivation, you end up looking like this. Uh, it's kind of cool. So, um, huh? talked earlier about uh, the master and how he did the Chan sessions. I don't know how many of you have ever been with Shifu in a Chan session, <laughs> but um, he would um, pretty much leave us alone. He said, um, he says we couldn't, he didn't expect us to run a Chan like they do in Lagos Place in China, for instance. <laughs> we wouldn't last five minutes. So he said, we uh, he gave us a lot of slack. He didn't, uh, if people, he encouraged us to try to sit the 21 hours. We did 21 hours a day and walk 
one hour, sit one hour walk, 20 minutes I could do here. And, um, and he encouraged people to try to do that. But he says, um, other than that, he didn't, uh, he didn't interfere too much with what we were doing. But he would come down to the Buddha Hall, you know, several times a day and just walk, walk around, look at everybody, see what they're up to. <laughs> <laughs> and then occasionally he'd lean over and adjust somebody or he would talk to him. But usually uh, he'd just walk around and watch everybody. And then uh, twice a day he would uh, do a kaisha, a uh, lecture. If you need to translate a lot. Yeah, I'm going to try. Uh, so we just talked about the language. 他怎么做禅期以前师父说我们不太会打禅期像中国人打禅期所以他就让我们比较随便一点所以他觉得我们不一定能打The most I remember about the Chans were the one when we fasted as uh, former Hong Kong and Hong Guan and myself and I don't know, maybe a couple of other people who were doing a 36th day at Gold Mountain. And it was during a Chan session. And Shirku says, okay, you guys can do this aesthetic practice of fasting, but you have to follow the rules and you have to accord with the um, schedule. You can't. To make yourself special. So he says, when everybody sits, you sit. When everybody walks, you walk. Then when it's time for lunch, you go in the dining hall and sit there with everybody while they eat. So, so before, uh, uh, and Hong Kong and Hong Kong, fasting is not eating for 36 days. 师父就说他可以um, any questions? So, hey, boys and girls, he did 36 days of fasting. And the way they fast is, uh, is uh, more difficult than ours. Uh, they have to uh, follow the schedule. They can't stay in the room and pass out. That's not allowed. <laughs> Even if you, you can't walk, you still have to walk. You just, even when you're so tired and, and have no energy left, you still have to do what everyone else does, like going down to the dining hall and sit there where everyone else, else around you is, is eating. And you know, it's, uh, very, it's like real torture because even though you're not eating, when you smell all this food around you, and when you're fasting, your sense of smell is so keen that you can say, oh, wow, I didn't never realize it. It smells so good. Bread smells so good. Rice smells so good. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of cool. And he said something here, it's kind of interesting. He says, and uh, you have to do what everyone else is doing, meaning that you sit for an hour, you stand up and walk for 20 minutes. So that's uh, how he was trained. 
so I remember uh, uh, when I was there as a novice, uh, um, I, uh, uh, they, the senior people, they, they weren't around anymore. So we, we uh, did it our ways where we, uh, we followed the schedule, but we were allowed to sit longer if, we're, we, if we can, uh, which uh, makes sense to me. Uh, uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's what we're doing nowadays. But for them, uh, Master Shenhua uh, made them stand up and walk for 20 minutes, which is surprising to me, probably an indication that uh, these are, uh, is, they're newer, therefore they couldn't sit for very long, so they need to break, they need to you know, uh, go to the restrooms and so forth. Mm. Um, but I didn't know that, uh, because my, my generation, when I joined the order, um, my teacher stopped teaching. So I had to you know, follow what everyone else is, uh, was saying. And uh, they all have different interpretations. Uh, uh, so he came to our Chanchi. When I was there, I was very curious. as what happened to the senior monks? How come we here slaving away, laboring away, and what are they doing? Uh, you know, uh, uh, this is where uh, people Traditionally, we work hard all year so that we look forward to dropping everything and do our winter chanchi. Okay, uh, so I was curious, what happened in the senior, the senior monks? At least I don't care about the senior nuns, uh, but the senior monks, what happened to them? And none of them ever showed up to our cheese. Okay, so uh, after year number two, number three something like that. No, number three. I came back there, and uh, he happened to be there. Okay, I came back from Canada uh, in the winter. Uh, I left Canada around December. I came back there. Uh, and uh, uh, Calgary, Canada. And I, went, I, I was so happy to be there because uh, in Canada, we don't have chan cheese, okay? Uh, it's, uh, maybe one or two days, but never a week or a weeks. So he was there, and I was so excited. I said, wow, this is so cool. I get a chance to, you know, listen to him. Oh no, it's the same schedule. Uh, he would sit with us uh, for a few hours and disappear the rest of the day. Uh, so uh, I, as usual, uh, we have a spot reserved for people who could sit for a long time, for hours on end. I was one of them. And uh, Heng Lu, the abbot at the time, at the uh, city of 10,000 Buddhas, uh, were, wasn't there. So I was really practically the only person who was sitting doing long sits. Uh, uh, so I was sitting, I was the only person who would not stand up and walk around. Uh, Everyone else was standing up and walking around. So he walked in there and he says, what are you doing? I said, uh, I'm sitting. Why are you sitting? Everyone else is walking. Stand up and walk. So I stood up and walked and I was very unhappy. <laughs> I said, what kind of chant is this? <laughs> you don't meditate and you don't allow me to meditate. This really, really is nonsense. So uh, I waited until he disappeared and I would go for long sits again. <laughs> That's me. I just don't follow, follow rules. I can't follow rules for some reason. Uh, it's something wrong up here, you know. Uh, and so uh, even in the evening during a Dhamma talk, he would sit with us and sit for uh, and listen to Master Shinoir. Uh, Dharma talk for an hour, half hour in Chinese, half hour translation to English. And he, he started again, he said, you know, there's some people who don't understand Chan at all. They think Chan is uh, for them to show off. Uh, they do it their own ways. They don't uh, stand up and walk. Uh, and I said, how, do, how, how does he know? <laughs> I said, 
someone reported me or what? <laughs> so I was very upset. <clears throat> so I listened to that. And that evening, when we went to bed, before I, I slept, I said, I sent a message to him. I said, if you don't meditate, okay? Don't bother coming to our child home. Go away. Scamper. Get out of here. Okay? Uh, and he disappeared. <laughs> That's why I knew that this guy, you can, you can send messages to him. <laughs> so uh, that's my, uh, my Chan uh, experience with, with uh, Master Hung Lai. I, um, I uh, uh, kicked him out of our Chan Chi. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so that's the nature of our relationship. He's so sensitive. As soon as well, I saw the first ten days, he disappeared right away. Pretty tough because we were well, all of us were thinking so much about food all the time. But then after that, it eased up, and our bodies became weaker and thinner, and we were able. All of us were able to sit in the lotus pretty easily because we, we didn't have any fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. He, 禅奇地,一开始的时候, uh, uh, you said it started, you felt tired. Mm -hmm. Did you say that just that? When you started, it felt, it was a little hard, you felt tired? It, it was, no, when we first started, we were all trying to, the first 10 days of fast, you're mostly just fighting your greed for food. Okay. So, 他一开始就在想食物, uh, 做大餐去就比较容易，因为呃，所以说说呃做双盘比较容易，因为他身体没有什么肥。好，哦。So after that, it kind of calmed down, but I had a tough time in the chan because we we have to do the walks. We couldn't sit during the the walks, so the the more the longer we fasted, the weaker we got. So <laughs> you're feeling like this old man walking around. Everybody else is. Because I notice people do this too here when you're walking. You're supposed to swing your arms and be vigorous mm -hmm. when you walk. Get your chi going, get your energy. Mm -hmm. Some people just walk around. <laughs> you can't get going that way. You got to, you know, <laughs> get a little energy there. And we're supposed to do that too. Well, we're fasting. <laughs> it was really hard. Because he, uh, Lai Fa Su, so he, in the fasting time, he had to walk. He was very tired. He had no energy. 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 He had no 走步應該把我們的手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手臂手
低香，吃完饭低香是最难的。可是他们没有啊、呃、问题，因为他们没有在吃饭。So that was our experience, the master, and he'd always tell us these、uh, Chan stories. Either because he'd do kaisers two, three times a day, so he because we'd go up to you know midnight, so he'd come back and tell us and you know, sit there and give us another kaiser, and、uh, he would tell us about like Bodhidharma story, Bodhidharma. Say. 啊、uh, ，就是，就是，呃，来法师说，这是我们的跟师傅的经验，啊，大禅情的经验，啊，他每天，呃，会开始两次，啊，因为到很晚，十二点钟早上，他还会再说几句话，他禅，啊啊，很会说达摩的故事。But the funny thing about what、well, he tells it is like he's right there with him. You know, it's like he says, "Oh yeah, well, we got off the ferry boat and we went to Hong Kong, and then we went up there, and then there's this guy lecturing the sutras, and、uh, his name was Xian Guang. Is that his name? Xian Guang, the Xin second pa- patriarch. <laughs> and、um, he would sit in there, and he Every time he lectured, it's, it's almost like the lotus flowers fell from the sky. He was, was like Obama. He had a very good way of giving a lecture. So, ah, Shi Fu, telling Dharma stories, ah, he telling is just like he's with Dharma in that boat. He said, "We go on the boat, on the boat, and see something." 神光，呀，就好像他在那边跟他跟达摩一样，他啊，来、呃、法师说啊啊、呃，师傅讲话的时候，就像莲花从天下啊、呃、天上掉下来啊、呃，像奥巴马一样，就是啊、呃呃，他很会讲话。So he's very erudite, as they say in English. He's very good speaker, and um, but you know it's all flowers and lotuses. But after the lecture was done,、uh, uh, Bodhidharma says,、hey, "What are you doing?" <laughs> He says, "I'm lecturing the sutras so people can end birth and death." He says, "You can't end birth and death by lecturing sutras. You got to actually end birth and death." He says, that "Not only that, you're just talking about the, there's ink and there's paper, and you're just." You're just talking about ink on the page and paper. I mean, this really made Shingon really. He really got. He just blew up. He lost it. He got really angry at this because Bodhidharma, the Shifu described him, was a really scruffy-looking guy. He was an Indian. A, he's a, first of all, he came from India, and he's really almost black. He's really dark-skinned Indian. And、uh, so he looked like a total barbarian. Everybody just avoided him. He said, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> you know, it's like it's like a homeless guy shows up. You know, <laughs> and uh, and uh, he so he just get out of here. He took his beads and hit him with those iron beads he had.、Uh, he hit him and broke two of his front teeth. And、uh, well, it turns out Bodhidharma was a real arhat, and if he let If you spill the blood of an arhat, that's 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 big time bad juju. You just don't want to even think about doing something like that. And、uh, this is what happened. And he he realized that if he spit the teeth out that were broken, they would fall to the ground, and the, the whole region would suffer drought for years. So he said, "I, I can't I do that to people." So he swallowed his own teeth. Oh, um. So he went to see. 啊、uh, ，神光的时候，他就问神光：“你在做什么？”神光就说：“我在讲经啊。”可是达摩就说：“你不可以
这样子讲 ，He said you can't like lecturing sutra is not going to work. It's not going to end birth and death because you have to do it yourself or something. Basically, yeah. He yeah. says it's fine to lecture sutras,、yeah. but you actually have to do the work. Oh yeah, that's what he was really getting to. Oh, like he had to, he himself, Shen Guan had to do it. Oh, that's what. Okay, you can teach Jing, but then you 自己需要修行。Um, so in that time, Shen Guan 就很不高兴啊， uh, 因为那时候达摩就像一个，他皮肤很黑，他也不太好看啊， uh, 什么大家觉得他不太啊、uh, 不好看啊， uh, 所以圣光就把他的念珠啊。Uh, How do you say iron? It's a tear in the nose. Metal, iron. Yeah. Um, 就打打磨，可是打到他的脸，呃，打到他两个牙，呃，牙齿就打破了。前面两个牙齿打破。但是那时候达摩已经修的很高，他已经是阿罗汉，所以他知道如果他的 is it blood spilled? Like if his blood were to be spilled in it or his teeth. Yeah, well, yeah, basically any part of it. Yeah, <laughs> 如果他的血掉在地上的话，那附近都会很不好，那边都都不会有水了，很多灾灾是灾难。干旱。哦，干旱。好热。好热。哦。嗯，所以他就他就嗯嗯。Did you tell the part where he swallowed it already? Yeah. 他就把他牙齿吞下去。Yeah, it goes back to the time of the Buddha when、uh, Devadatta rolled that boulder down on,、mm. and it caused a tiny little cut on the Buddha's foot, and、mm. just the hells just opened right up and swallowed up Devadatta on the spot because、mm. it was、yeah. shedding the blood of the Buddha.、Mm. Wow. It's really heavy, bad juju.、Yeah. I mean, that's very heavy karma. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like so it's a very bad juju. <笑>所以像啊、呃，释迦牟尼佛在的时候，他的是兄弟是 David Dada， 他他把一哈，我听不到，嗯，啊，把一个石头推推下去，想杀释迦牟尼佛，可是他那个石头割到他的脚，所以那个地就打开了，然后然后那个他他的兄弟就掉进去了。And then Shifu went on. He said that then later on the ghost of impermanence came. This is the, the, after this incident,、um, Bodhidharma just decided I won't come and have a conflict with this guy. I'm just I'll just leave.、Oh. And so he left. And then、um, I don't know days weeks later, the ghost of impermanence came to、uh, Chen Chen Duang、oh. and says, Hey. Uh, I was sent here by King Yama, and he wants to invite you to have some tea down there in the underworld. Well, that's a nice way of saying you're going to die. So, in that time, Damo, his teeth, he took his teeth, he said, "Oh, I won't be able to talk to him." So he went. So, for a few days or a few weeks, it was a Ghost of impermanence. Yan Wang. Yan Wang. Um, uh, I don't know if it's Yan Wang. He he just came to see the Shen Zhuang. He said, "Oh, um, uh, Yan Luo Wang wants me to take you to drink tea with him. That means that you are going to die. I want to take you to die." So, meanwhile, you know, at this time, Bodhidharma had split, and he. Gone all the way up to this really kind of strange little mountain called Bear's Ear Mountain.、Oh. <laughs> Bear's Ear Mountain, which is a funny name, but that's where he went. Oh, 那时候达摩去的山叫熊的耳朵山。熊耳朵。熊耳山。And he just started cultivating, meditating in a cave there. And. 在那边打坐。Yeah, and then in the meantime,、uh, Xian Zhuang he, he's talking to the ghost of impermanence. Well, what, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute! I don't, I don't want to go talk to King Yama. I don't want to tea. I don't want to do any of that. And、uh, the, guy, the guy says, "You can't help him. Yeah, everybody has to die." And,、uh, and, and then so he asks, "Well, is there anybody that's ended birth and death that's alive here that I can, you know, kind of wanted to find out?" And it's yeah, that.、Um, 
that uh, that Indian you hit with your beads, he has ended birth and death. Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, him. Yeah. So, well, so can, can I go find him? Uh, if I go find him, will you, will you just give me some time? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so in that situation, so I'm just and the so I will not go to see the Lord. I will not die. 啊，我他就说，有没有这这这个世界有没有人已经，哎，我不知道怎么说，就是不会死的。聊生死。聊生死。啊，那个鬼王就说是啊，达摩，他就吓一跳。这这个就是那个印度人达摩，他那个印度怎么可以？怎么会这个印度人怎么会已经聊生死？ Okay, any questions? This is uh, what uh, Master Shehua taught us quite often. It's a very famous story between Bodhidharma, the first encounter between Bodhidharma, uh, great master Bodhidharma who brought Mahayana from India to China, and the second patriarch who's uh, before he was, uh, he became the second patriarch. His Dharma name was Shen Guang spiritual light and uh, he's a he's a very eloquent lecturer uh, and he's uh, he lectures very well so that every time he lectured uh, the uh, he's so eloquent that the heavenly beings would uh, rain heavenly flowers down as an offering to him so he's very proud of that uh, and so when Shen Guang, when Master Bodhidharma came and saw him and, uh, and listened, patiently listened to Shen Guang's lecture and, and uh, at the end of the lecture came up to him and said, uh, uh, what, have, what, what did you do? He said, I'm lecturing on, on sutras. And I said, what, what for? And uh, uh, Shen Guang says, to end birth and death. So, and this is uh, the story behind the story. And the, the Chinese, you read this in the Chinese uh, texts, and uh, these people keep on repeating the same story that their teacher uh, told them. I give you my version of it. How is that? Okay. Um, the story behind the story. So he came up and. Uh, and uh, Bodhidharma asked uh, Sheng Guang, is it, uh, how can uh, you end birth and death? Uh, what you're speaking is uh, on black and white, on ink on paper. How can it end birth and death? Uh, and Shen Guang was very proud of his, uh, his, uh, uh, of his uh, knowledge, couldn't, couldn't answer this uh, old and black-skinned uh, and ugly-looking monk, uh, probably with a big beard, you know, as well. And, uh, so he was very upset, so he took out his uh, beads and, and swung it at, uh, at uh, Bodhidharma and said, you speak the demon's words, how dare you, how dare you uh, slander the Dharma. And the Chinese version is that, so he broke the, the two front teeth, so he turned Bodhidharma into Leon Sphinx. You don't follow boxing, do you? Uh, you have no culture whatsoever. Uh, go look up Leon Spinks. Jeez. Yeah, the, 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 the heavyweight boxer champion who lost his two front teeth. Whenever he smiles, you have two, you know, there's an opening. <laughs> so Bodhidharma became uh, Leon Spinks, the uh, Chinese Leon Spinks. And so, so he knew, Bodhidharma knew that he spit the, the two front teeth out with the blood. And then the, uh, the, uh, the area would be, uh, would be uh, in big trouble. They would have famine and disasters, national, uh, natural calamities for quite a while. So he swallowed it and walked away. Okay. And right as soon, right after that, uh, Sheng Guang, died okay and this is the this is the this is not this is what bothered me when i read the story heard the stories it's it's too coincidental think about it 
you know, he hit, hit uh, you know, he, he made Bodhidharma, turn Bodhidharma into a black, you know, really black guy, you know, uh, Leon Spinks. And then all of a sudden, he's dead. It bothered me. He said, it's too coincidental. Doesn't it bother you? I know it doesn't bother these people in the Chinese, but I said, what happened? How is it possible? And why would Bodhidharma come and knowing Bodhidharma is a sage and who knows who looks, he can take one look at Shangguang and know what's going on in Shangguang and he provoked Shangguang. You buy that? He did it on purpose to me. Okay? There's no way a person like Cheng, a Bodhidharma's level who can look at you and doesn't know that you have a huge temper and you provoke, you, if he provokes him, he's asking for trouble, right? He, I'm sure he knew that. And of course, they also have more spiritual penetration than I care to go into. They can look right away what's going to happen as well. Okay? But, so he provoked this guy and said, you... And it's an insult to all the Chinese Dharma masters, lectures back then. Think about it. It says, all you guys do is to repeat, regurgitate the Buddha scriptures. Okay? You only talk about birth and death, but you yourself have not entered birth and death. Okay? So it's an insult from an Indian guy to all the Chinese Dharma masters. Think about it. Hmm? It's very insulting. Hmm. See, the Chinese would never bring it up, right? <laughs> it's a Chinese story. So basically he said, all you Chinese are just all talk. Very insulting. That's why Sheng Guang was so upset. And when these people get upset, they say, you are the demon. You dare slander the Dharma. Hmm? So I'm going to punish you. I'm justified in punishing you. Okay. That also another vindication that he's not enlightened because he gets upset. Okay. And he's, when he's upset, he didn't kill Bodhidharma. you enlightened and you're upset. Uh, it's not good for you. <laughs> okay. If Shengguang were enlightened, and he was upset at Bodhidharma. I would tell you, Bodhidharma would be badly injured. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, two proofs right there. The guy doesn't know how to answer. He cannot prove to show to Bodhidharma that he's enlightened. And on top of it, he's got upset as well and, 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 uh, and uh, attacked Bodhidharma. Okay? Uh, and Bodhidharma got injured, physically injured. That's the Chinese version right there. And they said, I'm going to swallow it because it is so and so. And he, he walked away, and all of a sudden, Sheng Guang died. Right there. King Yama sent his two goats to come to, hey, Venerable Sheng Guang, our boss would like to have some words with you. It's too coincidental. It bothered me. It doesn't bother you, does it? It doesn't bother these people. Because if I were there, and, he te and I would say, uh, uh, question? <laughs> I find it funny that Sheng Guang hit, uh, you know, transformed Bodhidharma with Leon Spinks, and all of a sudden, he's dead. It's too coincidental. It's, it's not real to me. It's not possible. Sheng Guang is very healthy. He's lecture, just lecture on the sutra. You don't die right after you lecture the sutra. That's virtually impossible. 
So what happened? And the Chinese will not tell you. Right? Chinese people, hey, 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 this is our chi secret. We can't tell you. <laughs> My master didn't tell them. So what happened? Would you like to know? Okay, again, it's my version, okay? <laughs> the non-Chinese version. <laughs> okay? It's only a non-Chinese version. Please don't, uh, don't take it too literally. Hmm. It's the karmic retribution of harming a sage. Okay? He, all he did was to break the two front teeth of a great bodhisattva. It's not a four-stage arhat. You, if you only harm a four-stage arhat, break the two front teeth of the, a four-stage arhat, you will not die. I guarantee you that. Make sense? Okay. Bodhidharma is no four-stage arhat. So the Chinese tell themselves, this is a four-stage arhat. My master told them, oh, this is a four-stage arhat. So when you hurt a four-stage arhat, you, can't, you, you have to swallow well, your teeth. But definitely, he's not a four-stage arhat. Okay? He's a great bodhisattva. Uh, even rumor has it, he's a one-yin bodhisattva even. Okay? He's a Buddha. You see, that's similar to what he said. The Buddha, Devadara, uh, uh, sent a boulder down to the Buddha and to try to kill the Buddha. And his Vajra protectors used the Vajra pestle to break the boulder. Okay? The Buddha didn't do anything. The Buddha said, okay, good time for me to go. <laughs> so his, body, his, his Dharma protectors have to protect the Buddha. Otherwise, mm, otherwise, they fail the jobs. Yeah. So, so they had to break the, you know, they hit the, the border, big border, and they broke into small pieces, pulverized, and one small piece hit the Buddha's foot. And his, his big toe bled. And as, when that happens, the, the earth opened up, according to Master Heng Lai, the earth opened up and swallowed Devadara. He went to the house right away. See that? See the the correlation, the parallel here, you know, that's why Shen Guang immediately was punished and died on the spot. They came for him right away. Does it make sense now? Why Bodhidharma came and had to provoke Shen Guang? Because that's my next question. Okay? Why did he do it? To kill him to get him in trouble. That's the uh, unofficial version. <laughs> okay? You like my version or you prefer the Chinese version? The Chinese version is too mythical, you know? Oh, four-stage jihad, below me. You can, you can hit a four-stage jihad and chop his head off. You won't, you won't, you won't die, I guarantee you. Try it, you see. Make sense? That's why he died right away. Huh? It's all Bodhidharma's doing. Shall we continue or? So, or Tai just said, "Oh, I can go to him. Can you give me more time?" So he, uh, the ghost of impermanence, said, "Okay, you can have some time to find him, and if he can help you out, fine. Otherwise, she's going down for some tea." See again, the Chinese tell themselves, "Oh, the ghost, that ghost there is okay. You can, you can have some time." <sighs> Point number three: Doesn't it bother you? A small time ghost deciding, no, you don't have to go back and see my boss. 
Huh? Who is he to decide that you don't have to go back and see my boss? His job is, he said, you go and bring me back uh, Shen Guang. That's the only order a King Yama would tell them. And the guy comes and says, okay, I'll give you some more time, nine more years. Really? The smoke goes? <laughs> That's why the Chinese stories, let me tell you, it's too Chinese for me. It's, <laughs> it's still holes, too many holes. The Chinese, it doesn't even bother the Chinese. It bothered the heck out of me. We're here listening to these Chinese stories. Too Chinese. <laughs> so through the grapevine, the Xinjiang, he found out where Bodhidharma went. And he, he, this person would say, oh, I saw that monk, he went that way. And another one said, yeah, he went that way. So he started tracking him. So he ended up at uh, Bear's Earth, uh, Ear Mountain climbing. So he started to find out where he went. And he asked him, oh, have you seen this monk go to the other side? And then he started to find out where he went. So he's very repentful. He says, I'm really sorry I hit you with my beads. Kneeling there, oh, I'm blah 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 blah. Bodhidharma totally ignores him. Just not even there. He doesn't even he doesn't even register he's there. So he found out the Dharma, so he just told him, "Oh, I'm really sorry. He really regrets what he did. He made a mistake. But the Dharma just doesn't even notice him." So Bodhidharma is in this cave facing a wall, and occasionally he'd get up. And do um, go outside and to get his blood flowing like we do. We do go walks. And the, what he would do though, Bodhidharma was very interesting. He would go out there and he would observe the wildlife. And in those days, they had monkeys up there. And he'd watch the monkeys, how effortlessly they glide from tree to tree and limb to limb. They're just like, they're really in harmony with things when they're moving around in the trees. And he started imitating them to learn how they move like that. And all the villagers and stuff, they'd see boy, this, this weird Indian guy jumping in the tree and moving all these weird ways. And they said, this guy is really weird. You know? yeah. <laughs> They're all laughing at him and stuff. Uh, same. So, Damo, just sat in that bean, uh, da zuo, bu li, xuan zhang. He just, but sometimes he will. 起来去外面，就是像我们，就是让他的血比较热一点。他就啊、嗯，他就会那时候，他那那山外面就有很多树，也有很多猴子。那那那边的猴子就会在树林里面跳来跳去啊，所以达摩就看到他们很很自在的跳来跳去。跑来跑去，他就开始在树里面跟跟那呃学那个猴子怎么跑来跑去，在在树里面跑来跑去啊、呃。所以那时候很多人啊、呃、看到达摩这样子做，就看到一个黑黑的印度人在树里面啊、呃、跑来跑去就，就啊觉得他很奇怪。And、um, that later became Tai Chi. That's how Tai Chi was born.、Oh. Tai Chi and Kung Fu came from that. Holy、oh. Dharma, learning all these special moves and how to get your energy flowing correctly. There's、oh. these long chants. He would do these long chants and go out and exercise and watch the monkeys and imitate them、oh. and get the blood moving.、Oh. And、uh, that's where Tai Chi came from. Did he go into the trees? They did. Sometimes they、oh, said、okay. he did. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, Dharma, this way, he did. 他就这个功夫以后就变成台七，嗯，呀，他一直就跟那个猴子学。Okay, anyone practices Tai Chi? Good. 
<laughs> you should be offended when you hear this story like this. So Tai Chi came from the monkeys. <laughs> I don't buy this story. <laughs> Still liberal interpretation. <laughs> no way. The, chai, the, the monkeys fly, you know, flying in the branches turn to Tai Chi. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I don't know where he gets it from, but no way. <laughs> no way. Okay. Uh, he's no martial artist either. So you, you do martial arts. Anyone does martial arts? Uh, anyway. Um, uh, I think it's his interpretation. I disagree. <laughs> it's fun. but uh, So... From now on, we can, according to him, you can quote him and say, Tai Chi is monkey business. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Jung, he's out there kneeling day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. He was there nine years doing this. Oh, <laughs> You see, this is what killed me when I was practicing. I sat there and all these stories came back. I said, nine years, you know, why would the ghost allow this guy to live another nine years when he's supposed to bring him back right away? It bothered the heck out of me. So these stories didn't help me at all. That's why now I'm very upset when I hear these stories. <laughs> <laughs> It's a true story, uh, by the way. So finally, he, he says, Oh, great master, it was snowing at this time. Great master, please help me in birth and death. What do I have to do? He says, Well, maybe if the snow turns red, you can end birth and death. So, um, so, um, so, um, so, so Sinjong, he's so desperate by then, he just he couldn't, what do you mean snow turn red? Well, then he finally said, well, the only way he's going to turn red is if I spill my own blood on it. So he cut his arm off, the same arm he used to hit him with. Mm -hmm. And um, at that, when he did that, it healed almost immediately because Bodhidharma was actually a real arhat. <laughs> he was able to save him. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, and he awoke him very quickly. From that, they had a sudden enlightenment. Did he um, say heal the arm so, heal quickly? Um, uh, so, so who's the arm? 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 Uh, the arm? 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 This is so, how do you say arm again? So bay. So bay. So bay. Bay. So 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 Okay, okay, okay. Let me correct him for you. Uh, the story, the, the ending of the story is incorrect. Okay. Uh, he's uh, probably forgot. Uh, that tells you that he heard the story maybe once or twice and uh, a long, long time ago like I did. And then uh, he forgot. Uh, okay. So uh, it's interesting that he's really also unprepared as well. <laughs> he never really checked for facts. Or read, I would read the story again. If uh, that's what Master Shenhua said, I would read it again or verify it because it's been a while. So, what happened is that 
Shen Guang uh, uh, found the Bodhidharma uh, and said, uh, please uh, teach me the end, birth, and death. And Shen Guang uh, uh, and uh, Bodhidharma looked at him and said, you just, uh, you know, uh, turn me into Leon Sphinx. Uh, and uh, you want me to do you a favor? Uh, and uh, uh, so Shen Guang, yeah. <laughs> so Bodhidharma, Bodhidharma uh, 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 bullied him, uh, ignored him. He said, you, you must think I'm stupid or something. So he ignored him for nine years. All right? So, uh, so uh, it's a test because Bodhidharma says, I'm going to ignore you. You are, you know, you, you expect me to, to save your skin when you just hurt me, you just harm me. Uh, you must think I'm stupid. I'm not that stupid, so I'm going to ignore him. So, so, so that's Bodhidharma's test of Shen Guang because normal people would walk away. But because he's trapped, if he walks away, then the ghosts will bring him to see King Yama. So Shen Guang had no choice but, but find another way to convince Bodhidharma to teach him how to, to avoid death, avoid dying. So that's why it's this, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, again, that's all arranged by, designed by Bodhidharma. Because Shen Guang has no choice. You cultivate because you, because you have no choice. That's when you uh, can progress a lot quicker. Okay, you you practice Chan. You say, "Oh, you know, Master is nice. He's not as nice to me today for some reason. I'm gonna go to somewhere else where people are nicer to me." Okay, they treat me better than this. Okay, uh, so you fail the test. Okay, that's what happened to normal people. But for Sheng Guang, Bodhidharma is running out of time, so he says, I cannot afford for him to fail the test, so I'm going to entrap him, make sure he dies if he walks out. Again, uh, I'm taking a lot of liberties, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I hope you know, Sheng Guang doesn't mind. Um, I mean, Bodhidharma doesn't mind. So anyway, so Sheng Guang has no choice but hang around and find a way to convince Bodhidharma and he's sincere. Sincerity is a key word here. So Bodhidharma ignored this guy for nine years and the guy has no choice. If he walks out, he dies. Okay? So he has to sit, to have to sit there uh, and uh, probably kneel behind Bodhidharma for a while and uh, at first he knelt and they hurt so much he would sit down hoping Bodhidharma wouldn't know, wouldn't notice. And Bodhidharma would you know, let him rest for a while, and then he, be, he, he claims, this is my version, and then he pretends that he needs to get up and go to the bathroom and go see monkeys, okay? So he, he would, you know, he would uh, start moving, and then Cheng Wang immediately got up and knelt on his knees again. You see that? So, so that every time Cheng Wang looks at him, he's kneeling on his knees. That's the Chinese version. He knelt on his knees behind Sheng Guang. But they don't tell you that being Chinese, they, he cheated. <laughs> Try to cheat the Indian guy. See? That's why now the Chinese in India are always fighting at the border. <laughs> anyway, so... Sheng Guang had no choice but hang around there uh, until Bodhidharma would agree to teach him. That's the premise. So far, so good? Is it clear? Okay. Then, after, so it's a form of Bodhidharma teaching Sheng Guang about what? Patience? Yes? You don't quit. You keep on going because you have no choice. It's what better way to, to be more patient when if you know that if you walk out, you die. Okay? It's very easy. Way to train this guy about patience, about enduring pain, right? Kneeling is very painful. Who says you have to sit in full lotus? You don't. 
We ask you to sit in full lotus because we're asking you to become, to bear the pain. Same training. Is it clear? But you are wimps. As soon as it hurts, you say, oh, it hurts too much. Oh, 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 oh. Sheng Wang, because Bodhidharma could not teach him to sit in full lotus, so he made, he forced him to kneel, okay, to show his sincerity. But it's the same process. You get it now? Why we teach you full lotus? Because we want you to hurt. <laughs> Bodhidharma forced Sheng Guang to kneel there. And he knelt and knelt so he began to be able, be able to sit to kneel longer and longer and longer until no longer hurt. See that? Same training. Is it clear now? Okay? Uh, this is why, if, 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 imagine if Sheng Guang said, you know, uh, I pay you $40 for me to, to come uh, per hour. Uh, uh, would he be willing to, to endure the pain and the hurt and, and the discomfort? Of course not. Never. Right? And that's why that's the beginning of Chinese Chan for you. The teaching is always free because we know you can't take it. You're all wimps. You will run away if you, you have to pay for it. See that? It all started with Bodhidharma. And Sheng Guang. So, so, so Sheng Guang had no choice. He had to kneel for nine, hours, for nine years. And that's preparation. Is it clear? Okay? He was being primed for that lesson. And finally, after nine years, he's ready. It's not, there's no magic behind nine years. It's when Sheng Wang is ready. That's when Bodhidharma said, you know, he keeps on begging every day, of course, and the Chinese don't repeat that because it's unbecoming of a Chinese, say, Master, will you teach me? Sheng Wang uh, would ask him uh, every day and Bodhidharma would ignore him and then it became every week, every month, and so forth, and Sheng Wang, when Bodhidharma would still ignore him. Eventually, after nine years, uh, uh, the moment that Sheng Guang asked him again, Master, please, please teach me. Please have some compassion. Okay? Uh, teach me how to end birth and death. Okay? And Bodhidharma pretended to be exasperated. What does it, what does it take to get rid of you? Nine years? It's, it's, isn't it still not long enough for you? I tell you what. I will teach you when the snow becomes red. Get out of here. That's the American version. Okay? And Sheng Guang was well, I can't get out of here. If I'm going to die, okay, I'm going to, I might as well, if he wants to harm me, I want him to see me suffer. So he takes his arm, his, his, uh, his, uh, his knife, because back then the Chinese are very, very uh, 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 radical. Chinese monks, very radical. They bring with them a precept knife. Okay? Uh, meaning a knife where if they're about to violate the precepts, they would take the knife rather kill themselves. Harakiri. Well, a Chinese version of Harakiri. Okay? Uh, instead of breaking precepts. So they all carry a knife with them. Okay? Probably a switchblade, if you ask me. Uh, and so he took out his precept knife and cut his arm, not Bodhidharma's arm. See, this guy's uh, uh, he's getting too old. Yeah. So he cut his arm, and I think it's, the, I just presume most Chinese are right-handed. <laughs> because if you're right-handed, you cannot take your left, you, will not, you would not be willing to take your precept knife and try to cut your right arm, because it would hurt like hell. You have to hack it at least a few times. <laughs> See that? So I disagree with him. Probably his, his, uh, his hand, usually right arm, and then cut his left arm and cut it off. Bang! Like that. 
And when he cut his arm, the blood spilled on the snow, and the pain gave Cheng Wang an idea. Because Cheng Wang's initial thing is not about turning the roll, the, the snow become red. He's just upset. He said, if you want to see me suffer, you want to torture me, I tell you what, let me speed it up for you. Okay? Bear with me. <laughs> I'm not Chinese. I'm a bit going out a little bit on a limb. Okay? So cut it off, and the, and, the, and the snow became red from blood. So he immediately looked at it, aha, it has this eureka moment. It said, aha, I see red snow. Master, master, look, look, look. He looked out. <laughs> so Bodhidharma looked at him and said, okay, you suffered enough. Did you hear me clearly? He tortured him for nine years. And the final torture is that this pain here is almost like death. Agree? Hmm? It's self-torture. Okay. And most Chinese monks, they're very weak. They can't take pain back then. Okay. So this is like death to, to Sheng Guang. And at that moment, Bodhidharma said, he's ready. I can teach him. And that, by the way, this is my version. That's the beginning of our Weiyang tradition. We torture our students. Better run away before you have to lose an arm. Andres, are you still online? He's online. Okay. Would you like me to torture you? See how quiet Andres is? <laughs> yes, internet. Black. Hello, hello. So, uh, Jesus asks if if the monk kills themselves, uh, aren't they killing? Aren't they breaking the precepts by killing themselves? He's not killing himself. He's only cutting his arm off. So no, he's but really. That, but with the precept knife, that that's what it's for. If rather than breaking their precepts, they yeah. Kill when themselves. you kill yourself, yes, you're breaking precepts. Yes. But, uh, but. Uh, but uh, that's how they are. They are. They 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 show their dedication. They say, "I'd rather the knife is not meant for you to kill yourself. The mind, the knife is meant for you to uh, 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 remind yourself. You'd rather die than break precepts, and break the rules. Okay, uh, and it comes handy when you need to rob a bank." And, uh, and also, Altadina says yes, he's online. What? Altadi says he's online. Uh, what? Andres. What did you say? That he's yes, he is online. He answered your question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe in nine years. <laughs> okay. Any final questions? We can end here today and go to lunch. Thank you, everyone. Uh,